Hey there, it's Devin here with Make Anything and I want to show you guys my latest print. Check out this beautiful Voronoi circle. Or is it a square? Well, actually it's neither. Instead it's this really weird shape that from one angle looks like a circle and from another point of view it looks like a square. These kinds of shapes have been around for a really long time and they go by many names but I like to call them POV illusions because their appearance depends on your point of view. This one changes between a circle and a square and that might remind you of these ambiguous cylinders that I've designed in the past. These were invented by Professor Sugihara out of Japan and from one angle they look like a cylinder and from the other they look like a rectangular prism. The idea behind both of these is more or less the same but they're made kind of differently. I already have a very old video showing you how I made the ambiguous cylinders but today I want to show you how I make these new POV illusions. And this very simple technique can be used to make a lot of different shapes. Here's one I made using my initials. So we've got a D and an M. And besides being a really cool illusion, this actually just forms a really cool shape overall. It's very interesting and could be a nice 3D logo of some kind. This idea can be taken even further using entire words. So by now, hopefully you're thinking, whoa, dude, how do I make this? Well, you're in luck because that's exactly what I'm gonna show you in this video. Let's get right into it. Cool. That's right, today it's another episode of How To Make Anything, my series where I show you step-by-step step how to make some really cool things. And today we're making these POV illusions. So in the intro, I showed you some cool little objects that are fun illusions, but really they're just trinkets. But this technique is actually really powerful, so today we're going to use it to make something more functional. We're going to make some jewelry. So this ring that I'm wearing is actually made using the same technique. Of course you've got the circular ring shape that goes over your finger. And then from the side you can see this one has a little kind of squiggly line. It ended up making a really cool design, so I had this printed out in matte black steel using Shapeways. And I really love this ring. Here's another shape I made. This is a circle combined with a triangle. And this is the one that made me realize that I could make rings with this. So I took this design and refined it a bit into this one right here, which has a cutout on the top that I think looks nicer as a ring. And I further refined that to make this one right here, which is printed in premium silver using Shapeways once again. And this one looks really delicate and beautiful. I'm, I'm really happy with how this one came out. That one's for my girlfriend. She gets a lot of really cool 3D printed stuff or junk, whatever you want to call it. Here's another ring that combines the circle with this kind of lightning bolt or a Z or N. That made another interesting ring. So there's the basic idea. We're taking two simple shapes and combining them to make a more complicated shape. It's actually very simple. So let's jump right into Fusion 360 and I'll show you how it's done. All right, here's our empty project in Fusion 360. Let's start by creating a sketch on the right plane, as I tend to do. And then we'll go to the sketch menu here and select a center diameter circle. Let's actually pin this to the toolbar since I use it very often. So now we can click that and from the center out, we'll make this circle. We'll hit D to select the dimension tool. We'll click the circle and then we'll decide our inner diameter for this ring. I'll make this 18.6 millimeters for my fat finger, but you're going to want to change it based on your ring size. We'll click the circle again, hit O to create an offset and give this ring some thickness. For this one, we'll go with 2.5 millimeters. Great. Now we can select the extrude tool here and we'll select that ring profile, set the direction to symmetric, and we'll just drag this arrow way out to make a really long tube much longer than we want the actual ring to be. And we'll see why in a minute. Now let's create another sketch on the perpendicular plane. So in this case, the front. And the first thing I'll do is hit P on my keyboard to open up the project tool. And then I'll click this body to basically bring these four points into the sketch. Then I can use the rectangle tool to connect those points and we'll create this rectangle that matches the part. Now we want to decide what our second shape is. And in this case, I thought it would be interesting to do an ellipse, kind of a sideways oval here. So we'll go ahead and create that ellipse. And then I'm going to click on that, 
hold control and click this top line, right click and select tangent to make those points touch, and then we'll do the same thing with the bottom line. So now it's bound to the top and bottom of this profile. And then I'll go ahead, select the ellipse and do an offset, this time inwards. And we'll also do that 2.5 millimeters. There we go. Now we can select the extrude tool again, select that ring again, do another symmetric extrude, and we'll once again extrude that all the way through the shape. And now for the magic move, we're gonna go ahead and switch this operation from cut to intersect and hit OK. And just like that, we've now got this really cool shape. So that intersect tool basically gets rid of everything except for where those two parts intersect. And that's how you get really complex shapes out of two very simple shapes. You'll see here, we still have that perfect ring to fit over our finger. And it's just a really interesting design. We could leave things like this, but I'm gonna go ahead and add fillets to all the corners to make things a little more smooth and elegant. At first I selected these outside edges and gave it a three millimeter fillet. And then I went in to fillet the other edges, but it ended up cutting away at the ring too much and getting very thin looking. So let's actually edit this. And instead we'll just give every edge a one millimeter fillet. There we go. So as you can see, those fillets really make things look lighter and more delicate. And I think with that final touch, things look really cool now. So we can just go ahead, open up the body menu, right click, save as STL, and we can save this out for 3D printing. Great, so we have our first ring. It was super easy to make. And now that we have this basic setup, it's even easier to make different versions. Let's just go back to that second sketch and we can change this from an ellipse to just about any other shape. How about we do a star this time? We'll go to the polygon menu and create a circumscribed polygon. We'll change the edges here to five to make our standard star. And then once again, I'll use constraints to make this snap to the top and bottom of this shape. So since it's a point to a line, it's coincident on top. And then with the two lines on the bottom, we're gonna make it collinear. So there's our pentagon, and then my trick for making stars is to make a second polygon with the same center point, but this time we're gonna do it upside down. Now these pentagons are just for reference, so I can double click one and hit X to turn it into a construction line, and I'll do that for both of them. And now I can select the line tool and connect all the points of the pentagon like so, which ends up creating my star. Now I'll double click the star and hit O to do an offset once again, we'll make that 2.5 just to match the other side of the ring. And then we can stop the sketch, right click here, edit this feature, update the profile, and boom, we've got a new ring. Now, if we take a good look at this, it's got some really weird edges going on. And that's gonna happen sometimes, depending on your combination of shapes. Some things work better than others, and it's just a matter of experimenting and finding shapes that combine well together and just look cool when they're intersected. So yeah, that's a little weird. Let's go back and do one more. This time I'm just gonna draw some kind of weird spline and we can use this new control point spline mode. And I'll just drop down a few control points to make a curve. You can kind of see how that behaves. And you'll notice the start of the spline is touching the top of my rectangle, but I left some space on the bottom and that's because I want the offset to be touching the bottom. So once I've got a decent spline, I'll hit O and do an offset. We'll make it 2.5, of course. And unfortunately, Fusion won't let me add a constraint to the offset line. So for now, I'll just eyeball it and try to get it really close to the bottom there. It's not the most perfectionist way to do things, but this is just a quick example, so it'll do for now. We'll adjust these points a bit to get nice smooth curves. Then I'll go ahead and exit the sketch and once again update the profile for the second extrude feature here. All right, there it is. This is definitely a weird one. I'm not sure what I can do with this, but as you can see, we get some really intense shapes that at first glance would seem very difficult to model, but it took no time at all. So that's why this intersect feature can be really cool. So there's that rather interesting shape. I don't know if it would make a great ring, but it might be a good finger brace if you break your finger or something like that. But anyways, I really like that first ring we made, so let's go ahead and print that ellipse one instead. Before we do that though, let me show you some of the other rings that I've created in the past, so you can get an idea for what the profiles are. Here's the one that I showed you a bit earlier that was printed in premium silver, 
And you can see the profile here. It's just a narrow triangle with some fillets to smooth it out. And then I did that extra extrude cut through the top here and added some small fillets. It's pretty simple. Here's another lightning bolt ring and the process for this one was pretty much the same as well. This is the one I printed in steel for myself and it's gotta be my favorite because it's got a lot of really interesting, subtle details going on that make it look really cool. Here's that square and circle one that I made at the beginning of the video. Nothing crazy going on here either, except I put the square sideways, so it's a diamond shape. Some chamfers as well, but that's about it. And of course, there's that giant whoa dude. So here it is. It's really the same process, except I just used entire words extruding in either direction. And I also added a base on the bottom to connect it all and make it into a single piece. Nothing too crazy going on here either, but it's a really fun design because every letter from one word intersects with every letter from the other word. So all those shapes in the middle are different interesting combinations of different letters. All right, back to this ellipse ring we designed today. I went ahead and printed this out on my Dremel 3D45 printer using their Eco ABS filament. And of course I needed support material for this design. It's rather organic and doesn't really have any flat surfaces to print up from, but it did end up working out all right. I just had to carefully pick away all that support material. I also decided to try acetone smoothing the part to clean it up a bit, but after an hour of smoothing, the part looked relatively unchanged, which makes me wonder whether Dremel's Eco ABS filament has ABS in it at all. In any case, it still looks really nice and it's a very interesting shape. This works well for a prototype, and if I wanted a super clean version or if I wanted it in silver, I can, of course, order it from Shapeways. That's one unfortunate thing about this technique is that oftentimes you end up with forms that are pretty tough to print. This Woe Dude, for example, required a dual material print so that I could have dissolvable PVA supports. Printing this at home with a single material FDM print would probably be more of a hassle than it's worth. But with these dissolvable supports, it came out looking really nice and clean. Like I said, this is a really fun model to analyze and look at all those different intersected letters. Another way to get pretty clean prints of these kinds of models is using a resin printer. So here are a couple of the rings I printed with my PO Poly Moai. I never really got too much into resin printing myself just because it's quite a hassle dealing with that resin, but I can't deny that the prints do come out looking really clean. All right, well, there you guys have it. I gave you plenty of different examples of these point of view illusions. I showed you how it's done and the possibilities really are endless. So now it's up to you to make something cool with what you learned. I hope you're inspired. I'd love to see what you make. And if you do make something cool, share it with me at makeanything.design slash community. But that's it for now. So until next time, I'm Devin, this is Make Anything. Don't forget to stay inspired.